Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, for this video, I actually want to talk about the first two ROH shows from 2011. Now, I know there's a lot of reviews for them already and things like that, but uh, I'll try to keep it short, sweet, and uh, to the point because I, I do want to talk about them because I think they're very, very good shows, including one of the shows is probably, um, I would say, it's ROH's show of the year so far. So I, I would definitely um, recommend checking that out. But yeah. Uh, the other thing was, I want to thank everyone for uh, subscribing to Mickey Babylon. I think the guy is an awesome YouTuber, like I said, and uh, I think that Hindsight WrestleMania thing is probably the best series of videos on YouTube right now. So, yeah, and the fee feedback has been pretty good. You know, people were thanking me for uh, subscribing to him. It seems like almost everyone that watched the video almost su subscribed to him, which I was kind of shocked about. Because it seems like whenever I plug people, no one uh, really follows up and subscribes to the people I actually plug. So, He's very, very happy that, uh, you know, you guys uh, seem to enjoy his uh, work so far. So, yeah. Uh, the other thing is, uh, Pro Wrestling Noah, they had the, um, the match between Katoro Suzuki and um, Nakajima for the GSC Junior Heavyweight Championship. Uh, I know a lot of people have talked about the match already. There's a huge buzz for it on YouTube. Uh, people are hailing it as, you know, match of the year candidate. And some are even saying, Sean Carlton Zero actually... Uh, Thinks it's the match of the year, which is saying something because he checks out, you know, pretty much every single you know, uh, Noah New Japan show. So uh, I would recommend everyone to check this match out. I, I watched the match and I was, you know, I, I thought it was awesome. You know, it's, it's definitely worth a look. It's, um, you know, just do yourself a favor and watch it because it was definitely, you know, something to see. Um, you know, Nakajima really impressed me here. This is the best Nakajima match in an extremely long time uh, from what I've seen. You know, probably since the Kenta match, I would say, from, uh, from Noah. Um... Nakajima really changed his attire, and I think it was much needed. I think Nakajima was kind of getting stale, but he really changed his look. And uh, Suzuki is going on a great run. This is the GSC Junior Heavyweight Champion, from what I've seen. You know, he had that great match with Edwards from January. Now he's had. Now he had this match with uh, Nakajima, and I just I thought it was awesome. So definitely, uh, I, I definitely recommend checking it out. I have a link for that in the description. So yeah, so let's get right down to the ROH shows. We have uh, Champions versus All Stars. This took place in uh, Richmond, Virginia. And, and let me just say this: it, it, this is my opinion. If Adam Pearce is booking these shows, I'm going to guarantee you guys that they would not have been as good. Because I thought both of these shows were great. I mean, one show was great; the other one was much better than it probably would have been. Uh, I definitely agree with that. So we have Champions versus All Stars. I like the concept of this show. Um, you know, they, they gave us something different. I mean, the, the show is not amazing, though. I'll, I'll be honest with you. A anytime you stack this much talent into the main event, the rest of the card is definitely going to suffer. But the, the main event match is going to stand. It's going to stand out as one of the um, funnest and most intriguing matches in ROH history. You know, they put the champions together versus the All-Stars. And, uh, you know, th this was uh, one of the great things about the TV ch championship because without the TV title, they probably couldn't have done this match. So we had Christopher Daniels, the TV champion, the Kings of Wrestling, the Tag Team Champions, uh, Roderick Strong, the ROH World Champion, taking on, you know, the next four best guys in the company that were not champions. Uh, so they call them All-Stars. You got El Generico, David Richards, and the Briscoes. I mean, the, the actual match, it's not going to be a match of the year candidate. I'll, I'll tell you that. It was very, very long, about 40 minutes. Um, I say it's a solid four-star match, but don't expect, like, anything epic. Just prepare yourself to sit through a long uh, wrestling match and just have fun with it. You know, there was great interaction between all the personalities um, in the ring. Um, just the entrances were fun. It was funny to see, you know, the different kind of pops that each each of the wrestlers got. David Richards got a phenomenal pop. Um, you know, I mean, it, it was just a solid match. I mean, that's pretty much all I could say. Um, they used this to progress a Mark Briscoe title shot against Christopher Daniels. I'll just say that. But, you know, just, just a lot of fun wrestling here. I would say this was... Uh, a great main event. It's something that you're going to remember for a long time, even though it wasn't an, an amazing match. So I would just say that. You know, the rest of the show, I mean, it's pretty forgettable. Um, with the undercard, it, it, it was decent. It wasn't bad. I, I would say that, you know, Steve Carino's promo was definitely worth checking out. Like I said, Steve Carino's on it. On pace to being the inspirational wrestler of the year, in my opinion. It's just an awesome storyline with, you know, Carino trying to, um, you know, he's pretty much doing the Alex Shelley thing from 2005, trying to, you know, get everyone get everyone back on his side, trying to, like, um, how should I say this, like, um, you know, kind of make up for all the evil deeds that he did in the past. So I just think it's a, it's something great. It's something that people can relate to. Because sometimes people kind of misinterpret, you know, one thing is, you know, if you do something and people kind of label you as a jackass or an evil person or a bad person, 
and they don't really even know you yet. So, it's, 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 like, I, it's something that I can relate to because I feel like sometimes people really jump to conclusions. So I, I just love what Carino's doing. He's trying to show the good side of him, you know, the father, the caring person, you know, and he, and he and he's showing it in his matches too. Like he's really going out of his way to help younger talent like Andy Ridge and guys like that. So uh, I would say this: the Prodigy Mike Bennett and uh, Adam Cole. This is Prodigy's best match so far. Adam Cole, give him credit. He could really go. He got the best out of Mike Bennett. I thought it was a three-star match. Pretty pretty decent. Uh, Kenny King and. Uh, Kyle O'Reilly had a very, very good match. This is probably one of, uh, I would I would say this is probably Kyle O'Reilly's best singles match in ROH so far. Uh, I'm not so sure about that, but I, I thought it was good. One of Kenny King's best singles matches as well. Really, really was the match that kind of saved the undercard on this show. So uh, I'm going to give the show a 7.5, so definitely check it out. And in, in addition to the actual show, you get the best of the American Wolves. And, uh, yeah, that is a stacked uh, I'll have the star ratings in the description, but yeah, that, that's probably a stack compilation as well, so uh, definitely check out this show. Um, like I said, I, I really think they, they made the, the main event stand out, and I, I just think it's something different, so that kind of boosts the overall rating of the show for me. Uh, Alright, so next up we have Only the Strong Survive. Definitely pick up this show, awesome show. This show had no business being as good as it was. I really thought this achieved, you know, above and beyond expectations, because, you know, usually in ROH, like Big Rat talked about this, the, the January shows are usually mediocre, it's kind of like a warm-up period to recover after Final Battle, you know, guys are kind of, uh, you know, worn out after the holidays, so, you know, the January show's never really that good, but this show was pretty much amazing, I, I would say that, I mean, it has match of the year candidates, has an awesome main event, it has, um, it's just a great show. So let me break it down. I'm actually going to go through this match by match because I think it deserves it. So uh, let's go through it really quickly. We've got Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly taking on the Bravado Brothers. Uh, short, sweet, you know, right to the point. You know, Bravado Brothers. I think A-Stone said this. Bravado Brothers are his uh, favorite gimmick in ROH right now. They've just really, you know, kind of morphed into this different kind of tag team, you know, because they, the fans hated them at first. So they really kind of found their niche. And against Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly, you can't lose. This was short, sweet, and just an awesome, you know, fun opener. I'm going to give you about three stars. Next up, we have Red Titus versus Caprice Coleman. Uh, Caprice Coleman is actually from the um, North Carolina area. He's very, very athletic. And, um, you know, I, I can see why he's probably, like, not an ROH regular at this point, even though he's such a great athlete. I think he could use a little bit more work in the ring. But uh, he, he had an extremely good showing this weekend, just uh, – just pulled out a lot of uh, nice, innovative things. Him and Rhett Titus had a good match. You know, Rhett was great here. Rhett really um, showcased his, uh, you know, natural ability in this match. And, and on the mic, he really he really showed that he's, you know, becoming more of a badass. He really showed more of a serious personality here. So I, I was really happy about that, you know, because, you know, he's on the verge of, you know, turning face at this point. So I think it was much needed. So that was great. Also, we have Colby Band and Grizzly Redwood. You know, these these guys just kind of had a filler match, but it was extremely fun, though. You know, two of the, uh, you know, probably the two best comedy wrestlers in ROH right now. Uh, just very, very enjoyable stuff. Uh, next up, we have uh, Prodigy Mike Bennett versus Cedric Alexander. This is kind of a, um, a squash match. It really wasn't anything special. Um, you know, th this was kind of just a segue to get Mike Bennett, you know, uh, sitting at ringside for the TV championship match, you know. Um, so that's pretty much what it was. Then we have an extremely awesome match, Christopher Daniels versus Claudio Castagnoli for the uh, World TV title match. For the World TV title, excuse me. And, uh, yeah, this is great. This is kind of like the battle of the bald heads. You know, Christopher Daniels and Claudio Castagnoli, this is the first time that they've had a match since they're, they both become bald. You know, I remember uh, previously in the past, you know, they've, they've had matches uh, where Claudio had the full full head of hair, which, I mean, I mean, this is definitely the best match that they've had, I mean, it's a solid four-star match, it was just, you know, awesome stuff, the prodigy Mike Bennett was at ringside, he actually interfered in the match, the crowd chanted to him, get the fuck out, uh, they were really, really pissed off about his interference, but I, I kind of think it added to the match, just like the last five to ten minutes were just awesome here, just, you know, great, great counters uh, to all their moves, you know, um, an extremely athletic match. Daniels actually botched the best moonsault ever, but I agree with some of the other guys in here. It definitely added to the match. It added more drama uh, to, to the actual match. You know, just like I said, just great counters, just great chemistry. I love to see these two guys wrestle uh, more in the future. Maybe if Claudio wins the ROH World Title, this could potentially be a, a big money matchup down the road. So yeah, just great stuff there. Everyone check this out. 
Um, all right, so next up we have uh, Steve Carino versus Andy Wright, like Ridge. They actually t turned us into a tag team match. Like I said, Carino did a great job of uh, you know going out of his way to uh, you know show Andy Ridge the ropes and really um, you know it's really taking taking the younger talent under his wing. Just 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 another you know nice generous effort from Carino to sh showcase that he's on the right path. They pretty much faced the local uh, jobber team from Alabama. It was okay. It was what it was. All right, next up we have. Chris Hero versus Davey Richards. This was awesome. Uh, awesome match once again. I'm going to say, you could argue this is Chris Hero's best match in, uh, best singles match in ROH so far. I think the other, the only other three matches that can contend with this are, uh, you know, the Brian Danielson match from Dayton, the Kenta match from HDNet, and the Tyler Black match from Bitter Friends, Different Enemies too. But, but beside those, I would say this is without a doubt the best Chris Hero match in ROH. And at the same time, I would say this is one of Davey Rich's best matches as well over the last couple of years. Just just an excellent, excellent match. Probably didn't have the uh, crowd and the, uh, you know, the uh, drama that the PWG 7 match had, you know, because that was for the PWG, PWG championship. But this was pretty much almost just as good. I mean, just, you know, awesome stuff from both of these guys. I mean, these guys got time. This felt like a big main event match. Um, you know, just awesome stuff. That's pretty much all I could say. So, yeah, Davey and Hero definitely delivered. I'm going to give it four and a quarter stars. Uh, next up, we have uh, Homicide, El Generico, Kenny King, and Mark Briscoe. This is a four-corner survival match. This is pretty much just a, a nice match to get El Generico some momentum heading into his title shot at SoCal Showdown, too. But, you know, good stuff from these guys. Homicide looked great here. I think Homicide really thrives in uh, four-corner survival matches. You know, Mark Briscoe showed, you know, what he could do as a singles wrestler. Kenny King kind of... Um, out of all the guys, I, I, I feel like he was kind of held back the most in this match. I just feel like he could have done a little bit more, but... Uh, you know, still an excellent, excellent match. Uh, El Generico actually went over here. You know, no surprise. Obviously, you got to give him some momentum heading into his big title shot in, uh, on the West Coast coming up against Roderick Strong. So, and then, uh, you know, the match of the night, you know, the uh, main event, you know, Roderick Strong versus Jay Briscoe for the ROH World title. Everyone check this out. I would say this is this is another match that you could argue is the match of the year right now. Probably the best match. Uh, I would say Roger Strong and Eddie Edwards is probably the match of the year for ROH, but this is probably, you know, the, the second best match. And you can still argue this as being the best match. You, you, can, you can still count. I mean, this is just a war, man. Uh, you know, Jay Briscoe showed here that he, if, if it was not for the whole Briscoes thing, you know, he, he could definitely be the ROH champion. I, I think eventually Briscoe, Jay Briscoe, can probably be the ROH champion. It's just... I think either Mark is going to have to retire or if he passes away or something like that. I uh, definitely hope that doesn't happen. But Jay Briscoe proved here that he has all the tools, you know, to actually carry, you know, Ring of Honor main events. You know, he's just an awesome brawler. This is just an excellent, excellent brawl. You know, uh, even Kevin Kelly said on commentary, very reminiscent of the Stone Cold Bret Hart match from WrestleMania 13. Briscoe was bleeding like buckets, man. And, uh, you know, just shades of that Austin match from WrestleMania. We, you know, we, uh, Roger actually had him, you know, locked in the stronghold. Just tremendous drama. Uh, just, just, like I said, just an awesome brawl. Tremendous chops from Roderick. Roderick actually was sick in this match. He actually took Jay Briscoe's blood, you know, poured it all over himself. The crowd was chanting, you sick fuck to Roderick. I mean, so many great things in this match. Jay actually did a Jay driller through the table. Uh, and just, it just brought so much drama to the actual match. You know, uh, an ex extremely hot crowd. You know, this this is even better than Jay Briscoe and Samoa Joe from At Our Best, the steel cage match. So, everyone check this out. This is an awesome show. It definitely delivered above and beyond expectations. And like I said, I really think if Adam Pierce had booked this show, we would have got a really, really dull main event. Not, I mean, yeah, probably a dull main event, a really dull undercard. I just think it wouldn't, I just really think it wouldn't have been as good. So, uh, kudos to Delirious. I think he's off to a great start. So, definitely check out the show. Only the strong survive. Sorry if I went a little bit too long, but uh, like I said, that show is awesome, so definitely check it out. All right, guys, thanks for watching.